No, and welcome back to iHollywood TV, where our next guest can both be seen in the new six-part short series titled Underdeveloped, coming to Tubi on September 8th. Please welcome Thomas Ian Nicholas and Brian Metcalf, who is the creator of the series. Hi, guys. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for having us. Yes, thank you. It's so nice to have you two on the show. So first off, as we know, the SAG strike is continuing to happen and is affecting everyone. But the both of you have a new indie series, Underdeveloped, coming out on Tubi Friday, September the 8th, as mentioned. But talk to me about how this series actually, you know, struck a deal with SAG during a strike. Thomas, would you like to start off? Sure, yes. We have uh, an interim agreement. And to explain what that exactly means... Um, I first want to just kind of clarify what it is that we're fighting for, because it seems like general audiences maybe don't understand uh, the inequality of pay that's happening. So mm -hmm. in SAG, we have 160,000 members and 87 percent of those members are making less than twenty five thousand dollars a year. So that's mm -hmm. who we're fighting for. Uh, mm -hmm. Currently, SAG only receives two percent of residuals from streaming platforms. We asked for 11%. The AMPTP offered five. That's why we're on strike. The interim agreement means that we, as producers of an independent series uh, with no affiliation with the AMPTP, have agreed to give our actors 11%. We've agreed to all of the terms that SAG is asking for, which is why we're able to release the show. And SAG is encouraging uh, us, as well as other you know, SAG members, to promote uh, shows that have an interim agreement because it's kind of the way forward during this tumultuous time. And Thomas, thank you so much too for sharing what's kind of going on out there because, you know, for people tuning in, people that's not in this business, they might not exactly understand why everyone's striking. So thank you for clarifying and thank you for sharing that with our audience. And, you know, I agree. I think that, you know, people need to get paid more, especially with these streaming services. Streaming is the way that people are going and people need to get paid uh, equally and fairly. And, you know, hopefully something can be done about that. And, you know, it probably leads me to the next question in which probably viewers tuning in now that we're you know talking about this specific topic you know the SAG strike uh people probably want to know how long do you think this could last Brian would you like to weigh in what is your thoughts on that how long could you see this going on for well first and foremost as a member of the WGA I just wanted to, to quickly touch base that uh, both SAG and the WGA are both asking for fair pay through royalties because of the streaming services out there and they are both fighting for a lot of the same terms such as AI um, actors don't want to use, um, uh, don't want their faces being used whenever they choose to do it through AI, and writers don't want to have scripts being written for them that they have to rewrite from AI. Um, I, but in terms of however long it takes, I mean, I, it's it's hard to tell. It's just whenever we can get the, you know, them back to the negotiating table, the AMPTP back to the negotiating table with the guilds to come up with a fair um, contract. An offer, you know, and and hopefully we can do that soon. I mean, it's it's affecting everybody, including the studios. And I and uh, an important thing that the WGA recently stated is we're not enemies of the studios. Um, mm -hmm. What we are is we're we're partners with them, and that's an important thing to to mention is that we want to work with them. We're just asking that we can make a fair and decent wage during these times because. Um, with the cost of inflation and everything and how um, the pay has been getting less and less or we want to make a fair living that's all we're asking for mm -hmm. absolutely so, yeah so it, it's hard to tell when it will end um, it, and nobody really knows for sure to be honest mm -hmm. that's right you just really never know it could be two weeks from now it could be tomorrow it could be you know a couple of months but we will be waiting for that day to come. But underdeveloped, it surrounds a group of failed and inexperienced producers who were actually forced to work together at a production company. So, Brian, talk to me about why you wanted to create a series that actually follows this storyline. Well, it all started out from going to a lot of pitch meetings and going to meetings. And Tom's been in some of these meetings with me, um, meetings with agents, um, executives, everything like that. You have some of the strangest conversations sometimes that come up that make you think, am I being punked? Was, was this yeah. really a comment that came in? I could be doing a pitch for a horror movie and an, an executive come back, could come back and say, what if we had a dog into this? And we're like, a uh -huh. dog? 
And they're like, yeah, we'll make it like a buddy film, kind of like Lassie. It'll be a buddy dog film. And I'm like, you realize this is a horror movie. It, it doesn't really work that way. <laughs> or we would have um, Tom and I would be on the phone with an agent and uh, for an actor that we made an offer to. And the actor made the most ridiculous request that we would look at each other and be like, was that what we think we just heard? And so <laughs> there's obviously all kinds of crazy stories um, that a lot of people, I mean, everyone that's involved with this have had and even executives have had these same situations and agents and everybody's had these weird experiences so it's something that i i just had to create at some point well i'm super excited for everyone to watch this show on friday on tubi but the series is being compared to popular shows like the office abbott elementary parks and recreation and entourage all great shows you know how does that make you feel to know this specific show is getting that type of credit and attention from the media thomas I mean, I'm excited about the show. And and to be honest, um, when Brian, because Brian and I have been working together for 20 years and then another eight years with our uh, other business partner, Kelly Arjun, who's also in the show and executive producer on the show. Yeah. When we've been, we've done horror films. Our last film was a very serious drama. So I'm going to, I'm going to call myself out right now before I answer <laughs> uh, on how excited I am about the, the recognition and the excitement that we're getting about the project. When Brian first said, we're going to do a comedy, I was like, dude, what do you know about comedy? We, we do, we do horror, we do drama. Like there's no way this is in your wheelhouse. And I'm, I will be the first to admit that I was dead wrong. Uh, Brian wrote brilliant, brilliant scripts that once we showed them to the cast that you see, they wanted to be a part of it based upon you know how good it is so really i can only attest the excitement that people have mm -hmm. for the show and, and the comparisons that they're doing to brian's writing to brian's creation of this concept and you know i didn't see it until we were already underway so uh but now i believe in it well guys now we have a clip from the six-part series coming to tubi this friday here's a sneak peek at underdeveloped what are you two putts is what well ted is mad about the press release which i told you he was gonna be who cares? Well, now he's gonna pull his client. No, he's not. Watch this. Libby, give me Ted now. Libby. Libby. Libby! Give me Ted now. Stand by. Now, now! Ted speaking. Ted. What do you want? I understand there's been a mix-up with the press release. I told them not no, to do the press I, release. No, I know, I know, they jumped the gun, but what? don't worry, it's okay. I'll have your money in escrow shortly. All right, fine. Now I have to kick these two idiots' butts. Still on for Saturday? Yes, lunch and brunch on Saturday. The bunny's coming? Of course we can bring Trixie and Bambi along. What about Fluffy? Fluffy quit the business. Oh, she did? Yeah, arthritis. All right, all right, all right. See you Sunday and say hi to your mom for me. Talk soon. Yeah. See, that's how it's done. All you did was throw us under the bus. And that's how it works, Dillweed. Remember, crap runs down the hill. Well, that was a clip from Underdeveloped. Be sure to catch the show Friday, September 8th, streaming on Tubi. Thomas, Ian, Nicholas, and Brian Metcalf, thank you so much for stopping by our show virtually. So nice to meet you guys. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Noah. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Have Thanks, you. guys. Y'all take care. Y'all have a great rest of your day. You too. Have you always loved when you receive a box of roses but hate to see them go in just a few days? Well, not anymore with Rose Forever. They share a variety of colors and rose boxes with natural roses that will last for a year as if being freshly picked like these beauties right here. They use natural oil to preserve the roses and the bouquets are handcrafted by professional flowers artisans. Rose Forever is a New York-based brand that launched in 2019. And you know, the great thing that I love so much about this specific brand is that all the materials they use to cover the boxes are vegan. Even the pink suede and the black velvet as well. You know, I have allergies and yet sometimes roses might bother me, but not Rose Forever because they are allergen free. Thank gosh. To get yours today and to see the selection they have to offer you, visit their website roseforever.com and get 20% off by using my code iHollywoodTV20 with a 20% discount to your first purchase of a rose box. Get these or get any color that you want. That is iHollywoodTV20. Visit roseforever.com today.